Okay, what is going on guys? It's your boy Mikey here. I really don't really do videos like this where I just go at it raw. I kind of usually have a script out for me. So uh, bear with me here, but I'm going to give you guys the best Genova settings on this game. So let's walk through it. So starting off, we're going to reset everything. So that way you guys have a proper understanding. All right guys, so we are in the range. So basically here on the, on the right side, you can see like the mini map is following me around. So depending on what you like and what you prefer, you see how like I'm rotating and the minimap is following me around. It's all, uh, you know, preference. Now, for me, it's better to understand when, when the settings are like this, because as I uh, as I move, I can tell which angles are like this thing right in front of me. Like you can see like the wall and stuff. And then I could tell as I'm rotating where the wall is. So when when enemies appear, like you see on the minimap there with the bots, I could tell exactly where they are. So now this is a personal preference thing. Now, if you turn them off, like if you keep the, the player uncentered, you see how the minimap is fully like this. So some people would prefer this. Uh, me, I don't. So I'm going to turn that back on. And then as far as uh, fixed goes, basically, instead of it rotating, it stays fixed. Me personally, I keep it uh, the way it is. Um, as far as minimap zoom goes, uh, you want to keep this big. All right, this is too big. <laughs> 1 1.4 to 1. Now, the reason why you want the minimap this big is because um, you're going to be looking at the minimap for a big portion of your game when you are in battle. Now, the reason why is because the minimap has a lot of information. Like, they get they come on the minimap like that. You see how I'm like, looking at the bots and they're appearing on the map. Then they'll turn into question marks. Like, oh, they were there last scene. Like, you want to be looking at the minimap. They provide lots of information, especially when you're not getting comms from your teammates. Minimap is very important. A friend recommendation. This is annoying. You want to keep this off. This is like when you are in game and then after you finish the game, it will recommend people to add and it comes up in the top right of your screen. It's actually the most annoying thing ever. I get why the game did this because they want you to, you know, be able to friend people, you know, run squads with people going into ranked or do whatever you got to do, you know, meet some friends, you know, have fun. I get it. Crosshair damage feedback. When enabled, your crosshair will provide feedback when you deal damage. Typically, you want to keep this on so you, you actually know when you tag an enemy. I wouldn't really recommend turning this off because it could be, you know, information that you lose out on when you're in the middle of battle. So keep this on. A uh, damage display. Display damage data when hitting enemies. Off, do not display damage data. Overlay, continuously show recent damage data. Float, show individual damage data for each hit. Uh, display both overlay and floating data. I'm pretty certain this is like the after round report. So like if you are playing demolition and the round ends, it will show you like the damage. Um, It's very important to keep this on. Uh, as far as this goes, it's not really important if you keep this on, but if you do want to know what how you did that round, then keep it on. I mean, I like it on. I wouldn't really see a reason to keep it off. It doesn't really affect the gameplay at all. Teammate outline. Displays the outline of teammates. Keep this on. So you don't shoot your teammates by accident. You kind of look goofy. You know what I mean? So keep that on. Enemy outline color. This is preference. You have a whole bunch of options here. You keep it on red. Uh, uh, yellow purple greenish yellow violet brown brownish yellow gold pink blackish purple i keep it on yellow because yellow is the easiest for me to see personally uh, you can always check out the other options here as far as that goes we're gonna hit apply real quick we can see here real quick like the enemies are yellow i see yellow the best that's what i use on other fps games like valorant uh, yellow is going to be good for me there flashman color uh do gray white will absolutely blind you if you want to see just a straight like white image like your screen just broke then choose white i like my eyes so keep it on gray i would choose gray the glide effect enemies will see the gliding effect of your equipped skin off enemies will only see the basic gliding effect of your character i actually keep this off it really all depends i mean you can keep it on if you want but if you are going to play competitive even the normal glider is probably better because I feel like having some fancy stuff on will actually help you get noticed while you're gliding. It's just really like one of those things, you know, like it give the enemy a opportunity or a better chance to kill you. So keeping it on basic is probably the way to go there. But again, personal preference, but I'd recommend keeping that off. Auto pick up tactical items. Keep that on. You don't want to forcefully pick them up. Spectator chip display. If you're somebody that doesn't deal with pressure well, turn this off. If it doesn't bother you, keep that on. Friendship effect display. You won't see any friendship effects in matches. I'm actually not really quite sure what this does. But if there's like friendship effects, I mean, if you are playing like competitively, maybe turn it off so it's not distracting. I'm not sure exactly what it does word for word, but I would just keep it off if you are going to be going into competitive matches. If you are a casual player, then it doesn't really matter. I'm going to keep it on. All you guys got to know about mouse smoothing is that this will absolutely mess up your aim. I can't really explain what exactly it does, but if you do play other shooters, again, you need to turn this off. And even if you don't, this will absolutely destroy your aim. So just trust me, turn it off and move on. But if you want to destroy your muscle memory, keep this on and trust me you won't be able to get better at aiming or be able to get a correct feel for the game if you keep this setting on all right guys so now that we're done with the basic settings we're going to move on to the controls now when it comes to key binds everything is all preference but we're going to talk about auto sprint and sprint mode as far as auto sprint goes i would keep that on because auto sprint is very useful it's a life quality change i would keep that on as far as the sprint mode goes you don't gotta worry about that if you keep auto sprint on just trust me keep the auto sprint on it's just so much easier it automatically does it and toggling it it can be very annoying as far as sidestepping mode goes you want to change this to hold uh, let me show you why uh, it's definitely preference but the reason why i'd keep it on hold is because of this see it's one button and basically you could like go like this 
Right, aim, shoot. Ready? Aim, shoot. Right? Uh, we're gonna talk about how I missed that shot. Now, if you have it on toggle, what happens is that you have to click it twice. So it becomes a two button press rather than just holding it down. So that can be very annoying. And I missed that again. All right, we're not gonna talk about that. Keep it on hold. Makes it easier. I'm gonna be honest, I pushed the auto jump on wall stick off. And then also I put the delay down to 0.10, uh, mainly because the wall stick jump delay, you really don't want that much delay because you wanna get on the wall as soon as possible. Now, the reason why you want this off is because you're running around the wall. You don't wanna end up like vaulting up by accident. That can get you in a lot of danger and a lot of trouble. You wanna be able to choose when you vault up because that is the, uh, that's the best way to do it. Yeah, let me show you what it's like if you have it on, right? If you have it on, here's what happens. Up we go. See, like that. Turn that off. It's trash. It's horrible. Turn it off. When it comes to games like Stranova, when you have a lot of control over movement, where movement dictates a lot of gunfights, you want to be able to have as much access and control over it as possible. No toggling, no auto, nothing. Uh, the reason why for that is because, you know, basically it gives you more access to, to do cool stuff. Also, have a better chance of winning gunfights as to somebody who has stuff automatically. Like, you don't want to, like, jump up. You know, and then get completely shafted because the enemy's right there and you accidentally vault up and now you're you're dead. You know what I mean? So you want to be able to have access to everything that you do, especially movement games. You want to be able to do everything manually it's way better than automatic. So, yeah, that's kind of why you want to do that. And, yeah, turn the uh, the glide wall stick off, too, because, uh, yeah, that's that's also has to do with the uh, the whole sticking on the wall by accident thing. You want to have control over everything. You have to hit E in order to stick on the wall. It's going to take some muscle memory to get used to hitting E or whatever, you know, bind you got. But you don't want to end up gliding into the wall by accident when you don't want to. You don't want to end up jumping up by accident. That's why you need to take the auto stuff off. Because in games like Stranova, you want to have full control over your movement. Because movement is a big thing that dictates battles in this game. So yeah, that's pretty much the uh, the rundown on that. That will make your life a whole lot easier. And that is quality of the life changes for you. So there you go. The right sprint, all that. That is all personal preference. So you decide what you want to do. The only thing that I like on auto is sprint. You could decide if you want to be able to control your sprint too. If you want to get an extra edge. But I think auto sprint is the best. But that's just me personally. Remember, all these settings are personal preference when it comes to combat. I'm just going over the communications real quick because a lot of creators won't say this. There's a lot of you out there who, you know, don't really feel comfortable calming. That is okay. You know, I understand. I get it. Sometimes it's scary to get on the mic with a whole bunch of randoms that you don't know. Now, if you aren't going to speak on the mic and you are playing competitive, the least thing you could do is actually set up your ping wheel. You set like some danger signals, but uh, also... If you're going to play like this, make sure you are very accurate about your information so that we don't throw your team into haywire and send them in the wrong place to their death. But yeah, you know, just something to think about. As far as mouse sensitivity goes, so this is all personal preference. I'm going to show you my settings in just about a moment. Here's a quick tip. If you are coming from another shooter genre game, you could actually convert your sensitivity. This is just something that's really common knowledge. But if you didn't know you could do this, you could actually do this to another game to Chernova. For example, I play Valorant. And basically, my sensitivity in Valorant is 0 0.4. See? It says it right there. And then you want to set your DPI. My DPI is 800. And basically, you come down here. You hit convert. You type in Stranova. And boom. It will give you the sensitivity in game right here. So basically, my sensitivity in Valorant is a 0 0.4. In Stranova, it's going to be a 2.02. Fun fact, I do it a little bit higher than my sensitivity. Like, like a 0 0.10 higher. Uh, mainly because there's a lot of vertical aim movement and it, it can get really complicated at times. You know, you're, you're going to have to like flick up a lot to the side a lot. So a faster sensitivity might be better. You guys get it. In Stranova, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, weird movement, like stringify mode, uh, hold mode. You know what I mean? If somebody jumps on you, like a, like a bio mode, they could dash like over you. You're going to have to flick. I just hit my keyboard. Let's not talk about that. A higher sensitivity is going to be better for you. If you go up like little increments, it won't mess with your, you know, aim on other games. You'll be fine. For me personally, I keep everything on 1.0. There's a lot of people out there that will, you know, switch it up a little bit as far as like ADS sensitivity goes. Uh, this is all really personal preference. I keep it normal. All right, so coming over to the crosshair side of the things. Crosshair is all personal preference. These are my crosshair settings. If you want to copy them over, feel free. I'm just going to drag as slow as possible. You could always just pause the video and then copy them over if you want my crosshair settings. Things, but again, this is all personal preference. Uh, do what you got to do. Like my crosshair, you can copy it over. It's a little bit of a small one because I prefer small crosshairs. So I can see the target. I could actually still see head from far away. That's why I use a small crosshair. Now moving on to the graphic settings. This is obviously going to be dependent on your PC. If you want the best frame rate possible and the maximum amount of frames that you can get, obviously turn everything to low and then you'll be all good to go. However, um, let's talk about a couple of settings that I usually turn off so I can see the game a lot better. But yeah, so for the most part, the graphic setting is realistically up to you. 
And basically here, I just have everything on high, 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 because I like my game to look pretty. And basically the effect quality should always be on low because there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Because if you play games like Valorant, Warzone, Overwatch, so there's a lot of stuff going on and it can get pretty chaotic. This can make your frames drop if the effect quality is too high. And as far as anti-aliasing goes, effects still blur when you turn and stuff and being able to see pixels and stuff like that. It's very hard to explain. For the most part, in most games, you want to keep that anti-aliasing off so you can see better. As far as everything else goes, it's all personal preference. That is pretty much it. If you guys did enjoy the video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, join the Discord community down below. And that is all for now. Peace out.